Hey guys, Leanne here and you're watching Hip Hop TV. Tonight we're here with Evidence. He is MC, producer and one third of Dilated Peoples. How are you? That's perfect. That's exactly what <laughs> I am. Mean. Yeah, so it's what is most important, to For no people, it's called a sound check. Number six, when you're up in the mix, say it loud. Keep the people off stage and in the crowd. She has shit happen. Way too many times. Too many things for five mics. Who the fuck actually rhymes? So do you feel like working solo is like apart from dilated people, as you've grown as both an artist and as a person? Definitely. It's allowed me to um, go in directions that I might that I might have felt like might have been restricted territory with dilated. Um, it's not that I never had creative control to say what I wanted to or had anybody holding me back, nothing like that. It's just within a group or any relationship in life, there's always a bit of a compromise, you know? And um, sometimes for the better. Mm. And with dilated, that's what it was. But um, when I had certain personal issues happen to me, like the loss of my mom and certain struggle, struggles and certain life things that I was going through, when I tried to record those songs and put them on the last Dilated album, the 2020 album, it didn't feel right. Mm. It felt like they were sore thumbs. So I felt like if I had an outlet to do a solo record, it would be beautiful for me to express myself. And uh, coincidentally, that was our last album on Capitol Records. So as soon as I got out of the contract, I was allowed to do whatever I wanted to do. Mm. And that was the first thing I did was a solo record, not really to like, to, to like try to stand outside of my group, but more to, more just really just have an outlet to say things I needed to say, like therapy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it, it really helped, it really helped. And so we get to see more of you rather than evidence and stuff like that? Yeah, a little more Michael than, than evidence, sometimes in my solo records. It's not as guarded, but um, you gotta understand when I was coming up with Dilated, it was a different era in rap, and I was 21 and 20 and 19, and, and I was, I was comfortable with who I was, but I was still growing as a person. And now that I, you know, I'm damn near Jesus' age, um, I, I really, I've learned a lot and I'm a lot more comfortable with who I am. So yeah, it's, it comes through the music. Do the damn the Working solo, do you think it gives you kind of a new perspective when going back to work with dilated people? I hope it does. Yeah. Um, we're about to start our new record. It's called Directors of Photography. That's going to be the, the next dilated album. Rocka just put out Crown of Thorns, his first solo. Mm -hmm. And um, I put out The Weatherman, The Layover EP, and now come in Cats and Dogs. Um, when we were signed on the label, we didn't have rights to do solo records contractually. We couldn't do it. So when we got off, it was really important for us. Like, yo, let's put out these solos, let's get people to know Michael, let's let people know Rocco, not just Hyrule Science. And then we'll come back as a unit 
and you will be like, I identify with this person, or I identify with that person. It's not just that's the one with the afro and that's the one who jumps right. in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's it's. I love Rocker's album. His solo album is amazing. I'm really proud of him. And, uh, and what's that called? Crown of Thorns. Yeah, yeah. So the Crown of Thorns, Cats and Dogs, all this coming together is really just like um, support for the bigger picture, which is that of the keepers, always. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you do a lot of work with the Alchemists. Yeah, definitely. That's like one of my best friends. Right. So Did you guys grow up together? Pretty much. I mean, I've known him since I was probably 12, 13, 11, something like that. So. We hang out all the time and it's not really necessarily about music, like we'll kick it two or three days and just do nothing and then find ourselves working on music later, but it, it, there's not like a, a clock ticking or an A&R calling or a budget running when we hang out, it's, it's just natural. Right. Yeah. And what about like other collabs, are there ones that you hope to do in the future, people that you're influenced by that you want to work with? I've worked with so many people throughout my career, um, but dilated, I'm talking about a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like from B Reels to Eric Sermons to Premier to Beat Nuts to Beat Miners to just the, the dreamless cover, you know? <laughs> and then on the solo record, um, reaching back out to my friends, you know, Planet Asia's and Defar Eyes and, and those kind of cats, what was like, like my level, you know, like who I see eye to eye with cats. Um, and then for this new one, I was really trying to figure it out. Like, hmm, I put uh, my man Fat Sean on, you know, on the last one. There's a new artist coming up. I really co signed what he was doing heavy. So for the new one, I was trying to figure out like who I want to get on it because I've covered the ground of what I wanted to do. And what I found out is I really didn't want that many people. Yeah. I just wanted more of like what I need to say. Keep it simple. Yeah, but I ended up having some great people like Raekwon, you know what I'm saying, which is like a dream come true, Razzcats who I've always wanted to work with. And certain other people I'll leave as a surprise, but um, it's been an amazing experience so far. So who have you been your influences growing up then? Like did you always know you wanted to do this? I was a graffiti artist. I'm from Venice, yeah. Venice Beach, California. So, like, if you're from Venice, you know how to skateboard. Um, probably done graffiti, and it was just like just what I do, you know. And uh, I ended up moving next to a producer named QD3, who was Quincy Jones' son, mm -hmm. and it was like the biggest blessing in my life. Um, I used to hear the beats come on late at night. He'd be in his garage next door, and I'd hear the music start and I'd hear it stop. So I knew they weren't playing music because they, they kept stopping. Yeah. But I, I was trying to figure it out. And at that point, I really didn't know how rap music got made. Right. Like I knew that people sampled James Brown, or I, I thought maybe that a band. I, I just never really thought, I just never questioned how it got done. I just heard it as one piece, you yeah. know? And when I moved next to him, it was like, yo, my name's Quincy. I'm a rap producer. This is what I do. And I, I would sit there and draw in my book and just watch rappers come in like Everlast. And, Cockney O'Dyer, Justin Warfield, and all these people come in and rap, and then I watch them leave, and then I watch Quincy sit there all night and, and produce what they did. So I didn't want to produce it first, but being influenced by a producer organized me to think differently than the average rapper around my way, I think. I think I like moving next to Quincy changed everything. And then, just to add on, like at the time, um, studios weren't really popular. It was difficult to get studio time. Oh, really? Yeah, like this is back you know and um, so all my friends found out that I live next to this guy so they all wanted to come over because that meant that maybe we could go to Quincy's house and cut a demo and like some of the people who would come over like in hope but check it out it's EV evidence dilated peoples worst come to worst my peoples come first and they right here on hip-hop TV go nowhere